Hey, it's the Chief Bonnie with Board Games and this review of Stalingrad Inferno on the Volga. This is a game from Vinto Nuevo. Nuovo. Sorry, I always kind of butcher their, their game. I apologize. Or their name. I apologize. Although the game will butcher you as well. This is primarily a solitaire game where you play the Germans pushing into Stalingrad, trying to take the entire city get all of those key spots right along the Volga, and the bot, the Russians come in and just try to prevent you, just really try to grind you down. It can be played co-op, where you're both playing the uh, Germans against the Russians, or it can be played with a human player on both sides. I've only played it solitaire. Um, let me go in and, and show that to you. I tried to keep it a little tighter. I'm trying to keep it tighter. I think I failed. Uh, on uh, keeping it as tight as I hoped, but that's okay. Go take a look. All right, we're looking at the map. The map is gorgeous, and I'll take a few shots with uh, my camera phone that I'll intersplice in here just to show you a little more of the details. But it's important to note that the uh, Germans are entering from um, pretty far outside the city. So you don't get into the urban area until you see some of these circles. The urban areas are distinguished by circles. You'll see some spawn points have this yellow, or there's one way up there that's blue that you don't start off in, but when we get to the, re, uh, the uh, reinforcements from the Germans, I'll show how this little track works. It's a neat little thing. Um, the card decks set down here are really what's going to provide you variability from solitaire game to solitaire game. You'll see the Germans are starting further in the outskirts, and their win condition is either to eliminate every single uh, Russian unit on the map, that is all these that are in place, not these reserves that are up here, or they need to take these red ringed hexagons. These are control slash spawn spaces for the Russians. This is not going to be a detailed playthrough. I'm going to try to give you the flavor of it um, and then kind of let you determine if that flavor entices you to want to uh, play or not on your own. First, um, I'm going to break away and I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to just show you how uh, the units work. All right, I'm zoomed in on the counters. First of all, you can see some of the great detail on the map. Now, I will say when you're up and playing, you're not getting as much of that detail, but you can see when you zoom in, you've got right down to little roads and things that are on there and gullies and um, when you get into the city, you can see different city squares. So the, the map is gorgeous, but at this uh, more distant scale, it gets a little bit lost on you, hence the reason for circles showing you urban areas and such. But let's talk about the blocks. So looking at these pips, you're going to see the number is the strength of the unit. So four pips would mean you're rolling four dice when you go into combat. Uh, three pips, three dice, all the way down to two, one, and then the unit's eliminated. So then what is the color? So you can see the armor unit sitting at the top up here has red. Then you have several units that are all have their white side up. But you can see there are black pips here as well. This is their firepower. So if you have a red pip or a red dot, the red indicates triple fire, which means when you do roll the dice, so if that armor unit rolls three dice and it has red firepower, it's going to hit on a four, five, or six. It's got a 50% chance of causing a hit on that Russian unit. If you have a white pip, you're at double fire. You're going to hit on fives and six only. And if it takes enough damage that it's rotated down to one of these black pips, these guys here, they're only hitting on single fire, which means you have to roll a six. So as that unit takes hits, it weakens over time. First with the number of dice it can roll, and then eventually down to its firepower. And different units uh, have different reactions. Like you can see, we go just from three to two, but we're still in the uh, triple fire. And then now we drop down to just one die at double fire. And you can see what happens to this unit. And that is how you can show a strength of a historical unit. That's really one of the charms of block games. The cards are where you bring in a lot of the variability that's going to occur if you're playing multiple games of this, because certain things are triggered by the cards, in particular, 
their leaders. So you're going to have specific things that the different cards will do which are historic, which I'll cover a little bit later in the game. All right, zoomed in on reinforcements. So if you would pick the reinforcement action, you're going to get to draw a card off the top of the deck. You'll get to put it in front of you. Again, I'll explain what the cards do in a little bit. Um, but after your initial setups, it'll tell you on setup which units are already on the map, and then you randomize the rest, except these are all white units. I'll show you what I mean. Uh, boop. Hello. Okay, so it'll tell you all the white units go here. Then there's some other ones that get randomized in. But you want reinforcements. So you're going to roll dice. All right, and it's easy peasy. You can see here, you simply match what you rolled by putting them tons of twos. Wow, tons of twos. That's perfect. By putting them uh, on the reinforcement track. You then are going to get, let me see if I can disentangle. Hold on. Basically, four twos. Dun, dun, dun. All right, you're going to get all of these units. Now, you're going to see that these two are blue. I'm going to explain that in a second. We have white ones, we got another blue one, and we got some yellow ones. So the blue units, you can just see there's a blue spawn area up here. The blue units have to go to that area. They have to go up there. They're basically coming in from that side of the map, which is great. It's very close to, as I hit the camera, one of the Russian uh, locations that you have to get a hold of. Now you have a yellow zone here, so that's where these two yellow ones have to go, and a yellow zone way over there, very easy to spot. Those are actually much brighter than the blue one that's further up top. All right, so that's where the yellow ones go, and then this white unit, it can go either place, wherever you want. Your um, stacking uh, limit is four. So if I had units up there and I would rolled something that allowed me to put four units and I already had, let's just say, one in there, I couldn't fit the blue in there, I don't lose them, he would just come in and fill up uh, one of the further spots on the back of uh, the reinforcement track. Now the reinforcement track is cool. I can come back and, and tap this well many times. But one of the problems, and I'm going to zoom in on that reinforcement track, one of the problems you've seen already is if I were to roll another two, or let's say I rolled two twos, all right, I would get this white unit, he would go in, but now I don't have another one to give. And I'd take a penalty. All right, This unit, uh, where is he, 79 right here, was on the map, and he might even been engaged in a, uh, a key fight I'm taking. But as a penalty, I've got to pull that unit off the map and put him on the board. It's as if he's been called out. He's been pulled and um, now if I roll a two, it's just nothing happens. I won't get anything if I roll a two. So there's a penalty as you push your resource track down. Love the reinforcement track. Uh, let me zoom out a little bit as I'm talking. It is a very easy, clean way of Hey, you're going to get some randomized units. You don't know how they're going to come on. You're going to make do with what you get. You can't just order up a bunch of blues and come in and attack and that uh, from the upper area there, the, uh, the kind of southern portion of the map. You've got to deal with what you get. All right, so the first thing you can do is reinforcement. Second thing is a long movement. You're not going to be doing a lot of long movements. Here's why. Your unit has to be in a clear hex, and it's going to move two hexes, but they also have to be clear. So here's a rough hex, here's a rough hex. Um, imagine they're almost in column formation and a Russian unit can't be adjacent to them uh, in order to do a long movement. But let's say it was like this, the unit could literally go one and two, that's it, the German turn would be over and the Russians would go into their turn. Your next move action is two short moves. Um, this is where you get a little bit more vi uh, variability. You can break a stack down so I don't have to move all of them. I might just want to peel two off and maybe this one wants to peel back this way, or I could even move uh, this unit one over here, and maybe I want to move up here. So I can do uh, two short moves, and I can even uh, break stacks down. I could have just moved three, and maybe I want to move one. Uh, you can also do things where um, I've moved two into here and maybe one into here. The only restriction is you can't move into uh, combat. This is strictly more of a, a move action.
I'm going to show you a quick hasty attack. You can make one hasty attack. So there's a couple rules. Um, one, you cannot do a hasty attack if you're adjacent to a Russian unit. But this unit could do a hasty attack, and so could this one. You can move up to two spaces. Here's a cool thing. Let me first show this one. So this guy could simply, or this guy, these two units could simply go one and then declare a hasty attack. All right, and they would roll off, and I'll show you how attacks work here in a second. You cannot use cards in a hasty attack. It's as if you see an opportunity, you have to move quickly to seize on it. Now let's say I didn't want to move that. Now again, can't do a hasty attack. They're already kind of locked in here, but you can have a unit move toward the hasty attack, and as long as it wasn't touching another unit, it can now pick up these units, and they can all join in in a hasty attack. Um, the way I always think of it is, hey, you know you've got an enemy to your front, you've called for reinforcements, they show up, you coordinate, once you're there, you do a big attack. Now, all right, I'm gonna show how that hasty attack would work. So, now the way I play this, since I've always played solitaire, is these are all randomly put on the map. You, I don't know what this unit is, nor do I know its strength. You need to always turn the block the same way, whatever way you decide to turn it. The rules say face the the strength toward the player, I guess, so you get used to doing it if you're playing a two-player game. I like to have the strength always facing me, so I'm going to rotate this, and this is the strength of it. So the strength of this unit randomly selected, again, these were all randomly spun around. I had no idea what strength it is, is going to be one. Now, let me grab an armor unit because sometimes you'll flip a unit and it's already basically killed. It's dead. Uh, you don't, that unit wouldn't be there. So if that happens, you automatically just flip it to its weakest position and it would be then on the, uh, that would be the way uh, you're fighting it. So this unit is in a whole lot of trouble. First thing we have going on here, so, and you got to kind of remember some of this, this is open terrain. The Germans have an advantage with their mobility. Okay, so we have uh, Panzer Grenadier and a Panzer unit. They're very mobile. They're allowed to take advantage of this opportunity and they will actually get to strike first. Normally it's simultaneous. All right. If we'd been in a, and I'll show you in a bit, we'll go up to the city. If we'd been in an urban environment, the Russians or whoever the defender is, sometimes it is the Germans, would get to go first. But in this case, the Germans are going to roll first. So, um, I wouldn't have to go long, but again, we're going to show the armor unit with uh, two dice, uh, triple fire, which means I'm going to hit on a four, five, or six. That would be a nice roll. Uh, no need to even roll through the rest of the units, but you would have four dice here, another four dice here, two dice here. They would they would have hit on fives and sixes. Uh, great roll. Uh, the unit's destroyed before it even gets a chance to fight. Had it survived all that, and it was its turn to attack, it'd be one die and it would only hit on a six. Wow, I'm rolling a lot of sixes. That would have been great for that unit. But this was not simultaneous. We have clear hexes. The attack happened. Uh, the uh, the mobility of the uh, Germans in this case with the armor and the, uh, and the Panzer Grenadier, uh, they got to go first. The unit was destroyed. Destroyed, they just simply come off the map. Uh, you then have the option of you have to move at least one in but you could uh, advance uh, one or any combination you wished. All right, I'm gonna show a deliberate attack and I've moved into the city proper. So the Germans, they're in a rough terrain hex. That really doesn't matter. What matters is they're declaring a deliberate attack into an urban area. You can tell it's urban by this circle that's around it. We know there's two units in there. Um, there's a particular breakdown and I, I should have shown it on my little hasty attack because uh, the, the combat works the same for both and the, uh, the Russians would have gotten an automatic card if they had one available for them to use. And this one I'm just going to show a sniper. Um, before I leave this board description, I'm going to um, show you kind of a quick shot of all the cards or at least go over quickly what they do just so you get a feel for those cards. The cards, in my opinion, are a big a big heart of what's going on and provide the variability at the same time.
All right, so the Russians, I would have a Russian bot. I would shuffle whatever cards they have, so I don't know what they're going to get. The first thing is, the battle's been declared. All right, the Germans are going to attack. They're doing a deliberate attack. So the Russians always get a card if they want. Uh, the Germans have multiple cards face up. They can just pick whatever they would like to play. I'm going to show you the uh, howitzer. But first, these cards would both be just set down. So I don't know what the Russians have in play. I don't have to play a card at this point in time, but this is a pretty um, important attack. I need to break these units and then hopefully get into this uh, industrial center, this uh, spawn point and victory location that I need to take will spawn armor units. So it can be particularly dangerous. We would flip both these cards over. All right, we both decided to play cards in. All right, we got a uh, sniper. We got a howitzer, which is perfect. I'm going to show you how these work. So first, the sniper is going to automatically reduce um, uh, take a hit on my strongest unit. So you can see I've got uh, four, if you can see, let me zoom back in. So you can see both of my yellow units here have fours. So I'm going to reduce one of them, sniper action. All right, the card's been used. My howitzer is a lot more, oh, it's hanging up on the board. Okay. It's got two things going on. One, we're tacking into an urban center. So there is a chance for rubble. Rubble, if it occurs, is going to put this marker into that urban center. And what it means is it will make um, taking a unit out a lot, a lot harder. Let me flip these to show them again. I always flip them in the same way. All right, so this is an armor unit. And I flipped it as if it's already dead. I adjust. Take it up to its weakest position. Flip this, always the same way. All right, so we've got pretty weak infantry unit as well. You can just see the six and the two. Um, the two, I'm gonna show you a rubble roll in a little bit, but first we're gonna do the attack. Six is equivalent to six pips, so I'll be rolling six dice. And you can see it's a red pip, basically, which means triple fire. Which means, if I can find my other dice, there's three, means it will hit on a four, five, or six. See if I can roll these in. All right, so howitzer fire, there's a three up here. So I'm going to remove these threes and twos. And you can see I've got triple fire four fives, or four and two fives have done their damage. I've also knocked that around. Same thing applies here. The stronger unit, strength is the number of pips, not firepower, strength. This unit's going to be reduced one, two. I've got one more to use. Okay, and you can see they're both down to one. The rules say the Germans get to pick. Um, and so the way I've read it is whether that's the solitaire Russian deal or if it's even my own units, because sometimes you're going to take a ton of hits to yours as well. And I'm going to pick and get rid of that armor unit. So that armor unit's been destroyed. Now we're down to just this measly little fella here. So the howitzers have done their damage, but did they cause rubble? So we only check for rubble rolls. I love saying rubble rolls. If it's a deliberate attack, if you're doing hasty attacks, you're not going to do them. I'm telling you, that's a key point. I've Germans... All right, they, they leveled the city. They created a fortress for the Russians. Knowing that, um, one of the times I played, I tried to limit my rubble rolls, again, I've said it, as much as possible. I did not want to go into the rubble. So what is a rubble roll? You're going to take three dice. You're going to add modifiers. I'm going to show you what those are. So first of all, we got a plus two modifier. You've got to roll 18. You're saying that's going to be real hard to do. You'd have to get all sixes. Nope, we got modifiers coming in. So we got a plus two. Then you're going, going to also count um, the number of units from, if they're attacking from multiple sides, let's just say we had one of these. So that would have been another plus one and another plus one. Let's pretend these worked in coordination. They can do that. All right. If he was spread out, they were all engaged in the deliberate attack. And then we're also looking at panzer units and panzer grenadiers. 
they had big guns, they caused a lot more damage. I have two of those, so that's another plus two. So we have plus two. Then we look at how many hexes were involved, basically, with a, with a joint attack. In this case, I've modified it, two. And then how many panzers or panzer grenadiers, two. So we're going to add a plus six to this roll. All right, so we have uh, 10. We ended up with 16. 16 does not hit the number 18. If we'd hit 18, we would have added in the rubble. All right, but we didn't. Now, why does it matter? Let's say there was rubble in there. All right, now that there's rubble in there and I go in to attack this unit, I'm going to have to hit it twice to reduce it once. So let's just play this attack out. The howitzers have come in, they've done their damage, uh, they, they've severely weakened this infantry unit and totally destroyed the armor unit that was in there. Let's pretend there was rubble. So the rubble roll went against. Now this, uh, this very uh, weak unit is all ensconced in rubble. They are in the urban environment. They get to fire first. They roll one die. They have to roll a six. So they're attacking back. They get a three. The Germans don't take any damage at all. Now we're going to factor in these units attacking this unit here. So let's just start with, uh, let's do what we did before. We'll just start with the armor unit. So we got armor. All right. They rolled twos. That's a whiff. Nothing. They had to get four, fives, or six. They didn't get it. We come in with the uh, Panzer Grenadier. He's rolling two dice as well. He needs to get a five or a six. He did not. He got a four and a two. So we're starting to say, whoa, hold on. We can't eliminate this unit. No, the howitzers helped out greatly, but now we're in a jam. We're going to roll uh, four, four, four dice for this infantry unit here. Bam, there we go. We got a six, but that's only one hit. Hold on, it's off the screen, sorry. We got a six. We need one more hit to completely destroy that unit, and we only have three more dice to roll. Let's keep that six present. Let's just throw it down here as a reminder. All right, so we're down to this unit. Whether or not I can come in and take this spot, which seemed almost fairly easy using a howitzer, is now in doubt. I roll three dice, there's three pips, I roll it double fire, which means they're only going to hit on fives and sixes. Come on, give me a five or a six. Boom, he just pulled it. All right, he's got a six. He got two hits to reduce because of the rubble, the one. This unit's been destroyed. It comes off the map. Let's get these dice out of there. And now I can move. I have to move at least one in. I'm telling you, my goal is this uh, uh, spawn space and that space. So... Do I want to send them all in? Yeah. Um, bigger picture, hopefully I'd have something coming up here as well, but who cares? We've got to get in there. So I would move all of these units in, and that would be my turn, and they now have a benefit of being in a rubble space if the Russians were to attack. So how does a Russian turn work? So the Rus Russian turns are not based on the same five things that the Germans can do. The Russians have, let me get the back of the rule book, the Russians have uh, a bot decision tree, an algorithm. Um, I'm going to explain it kind of in a little bit more of a, a, of a brief description, but you'll walk through these processes, which you get really familiar with really quick when you're playing the game. So the first thing is you ask the question of, do the Russians control one of their spawn locations? Uh, yes. So right here, even in screen, you can see they control three. I'm going to engineer a little something here, and uh, we'll just say that we have a double stack here, and let's pre pre pretend we have a double stack there. So we've surveyed the entire board, and let me throw something on here. I've got these giant dice. Uh, the most they can have is two, or sorry, four in any stack. That's the Russian stack limit as well. All right, so I've surveyed the entire board. I have two stacks that are of uh, that have two in them. Hello. All right. Everything else is one or they've been destroyed. So I have two. I have three spawn zones. What I'm now comparing is how many spawn zones do I have in comparison? 
all right, to my top stacked hexes. I only have two top stacked hexes. If I had had, let's say, four top stacked hexes, I would simply spawn new units into these zones. I don't. I'm going to come back and show you if I did what I, what I, what I do at that point in time, but I don't. So instead, there's going to be a movement. So in this case, it's am I equal or below the number of spawn zones? I'm below. I only have two. If I'd been even with three, I would have been equal to equal or below my top spawn hexes. We're going to do a movement. The movement factor is based on this little rondelle that you can see up here. It's quite simple. For each one of these top stack hexes, I'm going to roll a die. All right, the six, we would start over here further to the north first. That's a six. And we got a four. We then look up here. The six says that this unit is going to move up and to the left. Let me get that die off there, just show you it's a top stack. So it would go here. All right, or at least one of them, sorry, randomly one of them would go there, spreading out its power. So one, randomly chosen, moves to the, uh, the six is up there, it corresponds, moves to there. Let's get that off the top. All right, a four means one of these randomly, let's just take the bottom one here, is going to move to that spot. And that literally is the movement. Now this could actually do me some good because it's hopefully just made it a little easier to get into that spawn zone. And sometimes that's what happens randomly. Now there's a couple caveats here based on um, the die roll. If I'd rolled, let's just say I'd rolled doubles of any number. In this case I was only rolling for two, but sometimes you're rolling for multiples. Um, if you get doubles, instead of them doing the movement, the Russians will draw a card. All right, had I rolled a one up here, you can see it's got a little red kind of box around it. The one's special uh, because if you ever roll a one, you're going to draw a card. Now remember, the cards for the Russians and for the game works as a timer. If the Russians exhaust their deck, the game ends, and it keeps the pressure on the Germans to keep moving. Now, the only time you wouldn't do this is one of the caveats uh, that you got to remember, which is why they got it highlighted. If um, the roll of a one would have generated a hasty attack, then you would not roll a card. So let me just show if this unit were here and this was the one atop stacked hex that we were rolling for and I got a one, well, you can't move into that space because there's Germans there. That would mean there would be a hasty attack instead and you would conduct that hasty attack and not draw a card. So the only time you won't draw a card is if a hasty attack would happen because of the one. You would also, let me grab this one up here. So you can see this particular hex, um, you couldn't, if you rolled a six or a one, you can't go there, or even a two, you can't go into those spaces. So if that was my top, stacked hex and I was rolling for it and I got one of these movements that I can't move into anyway, you would draw a card. All right, so again, the asymmetrics. If I have um, top stacked hexes that are equal to or less than the spawn zones I control, we're going to be doing a movement action. But let's say none of these spawns have I've lost control of. So I have six of them. And I look around, especially early in the game, and I, there's none of them that are even top stacked. They're all singles. All right, well, then I'm going to do a spawn action. I have something like, I don't know, 15 areas here that are top stacked with one. That's greater than the six control zones that I have. So then what do I do? Well, this is easy. And you're going to find out you don't do it nearly as much as you do the other one, which is great. But let me zoom in. All right, I would just put new units into this area and it would match what's already shown. So the Germans don't control it, all right? It's not under control of the Germans. And the Russians, uh, their number was greater than the top stacked hex. Gosh, I have a hard time saying that. Was greater than the number of spawn zones, in this case six. So I'm going to spawn more units. Well, this tells you I'm going to grab at random. 
So it can be out of the bag or off the top of the board here. I'm going to grab one armor unit randomly. Whoop, get it in there. And it's going to go in. And I'm going to grab one infantry randomly. Now, when you're grabbing out of the bag, you got to, you're, sometimes you see them, so you got to place them down, spin them around, blah, blah, blah. They're randomized already when I'm on the board. I actually like the board placement over the bags. Um, neither here nor there. Um, the only thing uh, you would do is I like to try to randomize up, uh, randomize them up a little bit because if there is a future move order for this, um, you don't know if you're moving the armor unit or the infantry unit. So now I have a stack of two, by the way, and you can see the spawn actions are what start to lead to you having these, these top stacked hexes. And I'm going to do the same here. So one armor unit I'm selecting from my little armor rack up here. He goes on there. This is an infantry unit. You pan over and this one is a double infantry unit and then you can see that one there let me stack them so again i'm drawing from these areas for my infantry these areas for my armor and i'm panning probably making you sick i apologize and you can see way over there you've got another armor and infantry spawn point The other thing you'll notice is this just became a stack of three. So the Germans would take their turn, assuming nothing changed in that hex, I would come back and have to look at the entire board and say, where is my top stacked unit? Well, that's the only one on the whole map with three blocks. It is my top stacked unit. There's one of them. I have six, in this made up scenario, I have six uh, spawn area is still under control. I is it equal or less than? Well, it's less. It's one. So that unit is going to move. I would roll a die. All right. <laughs> we actually got a one. The one, it can't move to the one. Uh, we're going to draw a card. So the Russians would get another card. That is what you will do for the Russians all the time. It's so fast. It's so easy. So the Germans, the tendency I'm just telling you is to come in and take these edge spots. They're the easiest to get to, and you can see they lay in um, the most units on the corner. But it's not always the case. You may want to push right into the center, try to take these core areas, leave these spawns open, and it drains these units off to the edges. So do you want to go pluck these? They're the easiest ones to get. And then try to come in and, and uh, get to the center of the pie. I've done that. I can tell you it didn't work. I could have. It, it felt very, and I'm going to get into a little bit of my feelings here. It felt very Stalingrad-esque. I was popping in, cutting them up, sliding over. I started to bring some other units in. And it ended up that I just couldn't crack um, one of the nuts and the way this system works with is it a movement or a spawn action who's got you know what's the top uh, stacked hexes okay nope greater than so as you're taking these spawn areas down now maybe you're only factoring in four of them and so or maybe you're down to three of them and you're sitting here saying well I only have three top stacked hexes or maybe I only have uh, well, maybe I have four top stacked hexes, but I only have three spawn zones. Well, you're going to spawn some more units in. So the areas that you're trying to get in and crack are getting stronger. And then when they're not, or maybe they're even maxed out with four, and you can't put units in anyway, then they start moving and they really make these city center areas around them harder and harder to get into. And it is very, very Stalingrad. Let me pull out. Um, I'm going to show you the cards real quick. Then we'll get to final thoughts. All right, I'm going to get into the leader cards in a second. But these are the, the uh, different cards that the Russians will have that aren't leaders. Very, very simple. So 
Um, a card is played, all right? So again, there's some kind of combat going on. If you get the T-34 dug in, you see the armor symbol, the Russian hex is going to get an armor unit, if available, and if the stack isn't already at four. If they are, they get a card instead, so they'll get another card. Remember, the deck of Russian cards is also a timer. So if that deck is exhausted and the Germans haven't hit their victory conditions, the Russians win. So, quite simply, um, that uh, suddenly that hex that you've attacked is now getting another armor unit. Hello, not good, but you didn't see it. Camouflaged. Very similar, and I put these cards so they're similar. Um, infiltration. Same thing, but it's going to be an infantry unit. Almost the exact same rules, but an infantry unit comes in. Infiltration. All right, Tommy gun. So that, uh, I always say PIPish, PPSH 41. Um, if they uh, have this card deployed, maybe I need to come up a little closer. All right, this is like a pip. So it's it's two dice, double fire. So they immediately will trigger this off or in the showdown, you'll flip the cards, you'll resolve the cards. This would be the Russian bot rolling two dice and hitting on fives and sixes. So they could, uh, all of a sudden, these Tommy guns are opening up, reducing the German attack force. All right, the, uh, the flotilla, little bit different on this one. So we're gonna look over here first. If the attack is happening along the Volga River coast, so if it's like a coastal area, there's water, um, then gunboats were going up and down the coast and they're going to fire on the German unit. They're going to roll three dice at double fire, hitting on fives and sixes. Um, um, then this Marine unit will come down and you'll roll three dice uh, the way the numbers, there's numbers on the board will set up that it'll put uh, a brand new uh, marine, I think they're marine units, uh, flotilla unit up near the Volga bank. So they floated across and now they're getting in your way. The sniper is great. You'll see there's nothing else on this card other than this. It's going to reduce the strongest unit, German unit attacking by one. And the anti-tank is going to reduce um, the strongest armor unit by one. And then we come to the anti-aircraft fire. This is an interesting card. Again, you're drawing these randomly. So let me grab, let me find, okay. So we, the Germans have put in a card. A random card has been drawn from the Russians. We reveal. All right, the Germans were pushing in hard, and I'll show you the German cards in a second, and they really wanted an attack, probably in an urban area. They're going to roll six triple fire dice. Remember, they're going to do three rubble, all right? But here's the cool thing. If the Russian card randomly drawn, can I pick it up? Can my nails pick it up? No, no, they cannot. This would cancel any air card. So there's Stukas, I'll show you in a bit, and there's the Hinkle 111s canceled, gone, not going to happen. Not going to happen. Now, a lot of times this card will come up and either um, no card was played or a non-air card was played, in which case you're thinking, well, this is junk. It doesn't do anything. It still does this. And you say, what is that? 26 is an urban hex right near one of the spawn areas. And you will take a rubble marker and put it in there. It's as if uh, there were some plane attacks and they've done some damage, but really what it's doing is saying, you know what, this card isn't useless. It's going to add rubble to an area that you're going to have your troops wading through to try to get a spawn point. All right, that is the regular cards. Let me show you the leader cards. All right, so out of this whole deck, out of this whole, whole deck, you only have three leaders. Let's start with Vasily Zaitsev. He's like the ultimate sniper. So, much like the sniper card, which I can't find now that I'm reaching for it, he'll do the sniper action, but he does it twice. So that means if there is an infantry unit or a panzer grenadier, they're going to be reduced, not just once, it's as if you've played two sniper cards, they'll be reduced by twice. Khrushchev, 
brutal, 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 and awesome. And I'm telling you, you're going to hope this card comes up later rather than sooner. Because what it will do is it will take a Russian unit and it now has a plus one to its attack. But if this Russian unit rolls a one, they're going to be weakened by one as if they were, as if they were, well, shot by their own people. All right, brutal, NKVD. So let's say, uh, let's say it's at this. So we're rolling two dice, single fire. We roll and hello, it's exactly. So you get a plus one, this becomes a four. So they're motivated. They're not motivated up to six, but now they would have hit on a five or six. But oh, golly. Some of the troops panicked, or they wouldn't move up, or they started to retreat, and instead the NKVD shoots those guys down, and it's just weakened that unit. So it's this very cool mixed bag of they're now getting a plus one. Single fire becomes double fire. Double fire becomes uh, triple fire. And triple fire, hello, they're now hitting on threes, four, fives, and sixes. Very dangerous, not that the Russians have a bunch of those troops around anyway, but they have some. But man, they'll also shoot their own. Let me clear that out, and I'll show you Chukov. All right, so under Chukov, I know I may be saying it wrong. First of all, geez, does he look like a tough Russian. Um, they will have opportunity fire. They're going to also have deliberate attack. All right, but opportunity fire is if you have a uh, German unit and they're attacking maybe over here, but there is, I don't even know why I've got them on there, basically every adjacent Russian unit, they're going to take a pop shot at your guys. So as you're pushing into these center areas, you have Russian blocks a lot of times on multiple sides of your hex. And once Chukov's in there, these guys start taking pop shots at you. Now they're pretty weak. They're single file fire. They're one. Uh, um, they're one die. All right, but um, they hit on sixes. And if you get enough of them shooting at you, you just start taking these little pin pricks, and they bleed you dry. And then you have the hasty attack. So again, this is on a movement phase. Um, you've rolled on the rondelle, and one of the Russian units. Uh, can't move because there's a German unit or units there, it performs a hasty attack. If Chukov's in play, again, you can see all the arrows kind of zoomed in here. Every unit adjacent to that German hex that the Russian unit would have moved into, but it can't. So it does a hasty attack. Instead of a hasty attack, it's now deliberate. And all those Russian units that are touching the hex side of the German they join in in a deliberate attack. So he's tough. You want him to come in late, I'm just telling you. <laughs> late, late, late. All right, I'm going to go down the German cards real quick. So sniper is exactly the same. So is the pack. Anti-tank gun, it's going to reduce uh, German armor by one. Sniper will reduce uh, German or uh, Russian infantry by one. These pioneers, so you're going to see one... You've got Linden's photo over here. Linden's going to have to be in play for you to use this particular card. The 672nd Pioneer Group, you can see they're better than normal Pioneers by a far margin, and they're going to do a lot more damage. So let's talk about this Pioneer Group. So uh, the Pioneers had flamethrowers and uh, high explosives, and they could just really just tear up um, a city block. They're going to do five dice triple fire, so hitting on four, fives, and sixes. You're going to do a rubble roll, and the rubble roll will have a plus one if you use this card. Again, assuming you're in an urban environment. So again, you can see they would roll eight die, triple fire, rubble roll of three. All right, the aircraft card. So you can see Stukas, five dice, triple fire. You're going to have a plus two to the rubble roll, and the Hinkle 111s. Six dice, triple fire, plus three, and you get these cool little little uh, deals. You get a little Stuka and a Hinkle. All right, now we have the Howitzer card. Uh, six dice, triple fire, 
plus two to the rebel roll. Pretty straightforward on all these guys. The leaders, there's more of them, and let me show you what they do. All right, Paulus, if you have him, he sits uh, basically face up on the table, and anytime you're going to draw more of the cards, you're going to draw two of them instead of just one. Hoth will allow you to use a combined force bonus, talk about that in a second, and a blitz movement. All right, so if you're combining units in, now this is a Panzer Grenadier unit. Let me put him down. He's already a mixed force. He's got armor and infantry. But you could do it with, um, well, there's an infantry unit, and let me grab. All right, so if I had a hex that just had these guys in there, it's, it's just the combined force mode where I've got a combination of both hard-hitting armor and mobile quick infantry. You got to be in a clear hex and you get to roll first. For blitz movement, you've got to have um, uh, a block with a black background. So this guy couldn't do it. He's on foot. He can't move as quick. The main key is here, again, Hoth is in play. You've attacked a hex, you've won, and you get that follow-on movement where you can move into the hex. Well, if you have a unit that has a black background, you can now go one more hex. Linden. So Linden allows you to, one, play that German card, the 672nd, I believe. Here's a regular Pioneer. All right, but you could play multiple Pioneers as well. So instead of just playing one card, you could play a couple Pioneer units, or, and I'm trying to find it, or you can play the 672nd, or I could play both of these. Now the effects would be cumulative, as I'm sliding all over, so I'm going to get a heck of a wallop coming in. Uh, I might even have more Pioneer units, but boy, am I going to turn the place into rubble. So von Richthofen, by the way, I can't tell if he's, it almost looks like he's sucking on his finger. That, that photo just throws me off. I'm just telling you. Let me find, uh, all right. So you're going to get to throw double dice. So if you got von Richthofen under the uh, Stuka or the Hinkle 111, you're going to be throwing double dice. So I'd be throwing 12, but I'm also going to double the rubble modifier. All right, the OKH unit or leader is a bit different, a bit quirky. So first, if it's played, it changes or modifies the victory conditions slightly. So it's still, if all Soviet units are destroyed from the map, that, that's one way to win. The second one is instead of just having all of the six spawn areas under your control, you have to have all 19 hexes, which is all along the border of the river, the Volga, 1 through 19 are in German control. So you're saying, why would you make it um, harder on yourself? Well, the key comes in depending on what has happened over here. So you can see I've lost one uh, of my units due to this reinforcement track that was emptied out, and then I had to pull it off the board. Let me pull it up. So you're going to see it has this R in it. All right. All of these units have that R symbol. And what's going to happen is it, it has the potential to elongate the game. So normally the game is over if the Russians' deck runs empty. If this runs out, all right, that will end the game. It puts a time crunch on the Germans. Well, for every one of these um, units that's been removed, so potentially five, one, two, three, four, five, it gives the Germans an extra turn. So you can make your victory conditions a little bit harder, but you extend past the exhaust deck into five more turns. All right, we're back. So final thoughts. So first, let me pull out and tell you the, I love these cards. Um, the cards give you all the variability in your solitaire experience. You don't know when you're going to get what. You don't know if you're going to have a bunch of pioneers and then do you get Linden to really kind of make them pop in right when you want. Or I had one early game where I got the 672nd, is that what they are? And I never got Linden. They sat there and mocked me. Hey, we could roll in, do a bunch of triple fire damage over there, but we're not. We're not doing it. 
<laughs> I was like, come on, where's Lynn? Um, to the point I started even trying to go to res or the reinforcements, I was going to say reserves, when I probably didn't need to. But the Russian deck being the timer, and they're, when they start, there's points where they were like, draw a card. Dang, I don't want them drawing cards or burning that deck down. So I'm thinking, what can I do in game so that the stacks are a little bit different? Um, you know, I'm trying to take these core areas here. Um, and, and so you get the, the you, there's that game element in there. But at the same time, this is the hard part. It felt like Stalingrad. Now here's the deal. This is not, I, I think most, a lot of the guys that watch the show or gals that watch my show know that I really lean toward tactical World War II games, tactical games in general. I like the, 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 the men, the company against the company, the squad against the, the squad. And in, I wasn't sure what I was going to get with this game because when I think Stalingrad, I'm thinking, um... Oh, I'm trying to remember all the key names, but uh, the barricades, and I'm thinking the uh, the big factories and and the the brutal mono -y mono combat that was going on there, and the sniper hits that are taking. And this is a more pulled out view for me. So I love playing the Stalingrad conflict, but I thought, is this going to be too far removed from that? tactical perspective for me. It is not a tactical game, as you've seen. But what it what it gave me was what I love in the Stalingrad conflict. The Germans are pushing in to their weakness. They're not a military unit designed to really slog it out up close in this rubbled environment. And that's the Russians' strength. Um, and it feels, the, the game portrays that. The, when you're out in the open and you're maneuvering in, you're flying through, you're blitzing, you're, you're zipping around, you're combining your arms, it's great. Then you slog right into the urban city and you're hoping you don't make a lot of rubble. At least I, I tried, one old game, I was like, reduce the rubble. I would even... I hazarded and took a couple, or tried to take a couple city urban centers without using my air or my artillery um, because I didn't want to turn it into rubble. And boy, is that a delicious decision. There was a couple times, you know, you, you've got to play your cards before the combat stuff happens. And I'm like, oh my God, you flip the units over and you're like, oh, I could have used the Astukas. And you didn't. And now you're kind of stuck. So, my point being that it had that grinding feel of I'm the Germans moving into an area that I just, boy, it's so close. I came, I, I never, I haven't won this thing. I keep getting so close. I'm like, I got this. I'm going to win this one. And then I'm like, I can't get the last spawn location. And they keep, boom, and they're stronger. And then the guards units are in there. And I'm like, oh, my God. Ah, ah. So it, it has that, that Stalingrad feel. That's what I was looking for. I wanted that cringing, it feels like I've got it, but I don't. Now, I, I did what I call a thunder run on one, where I just tried to, because th I always thought, man, the, the plotting Germanness of we're taking this block and we're going to get rid of this unit, we're going to move up. I was like, no, a big old spear tip, pierce all the way in and take the spots that you want. And I thought, I wonder if I can jack with the system if I just let these peripheral Russian units stand and I just thunder run right in. Kind of like Iraq where the, they just went right down the center with their strong armor. They didn't destroy everything. They took the key parts and then they said, come, come at us if you want. I tried that. It seemed to work great. And then not so much. Um... Trying to wipe out everybody's pretty tough too. So uh, I'll give it a, a knock. I went and printed these off of BGG. These are helper guides. These are extremely helpful, and I do wish there was a little double-sided card in this um, from the company that broke everything down in one area so you can just take a quick look. Support cards, what do they do? 
Uh, leader cards, what do they do? The leader cards, I, I'd have to go, well, you get it after a while, but I have to kind of flip through and make sure I was doing it right. Setup, whatever. Combat sequence, the, uh, the chart on, you know, what the Russians are doing. Please put a card in that just breaks it down because it keeps you from flipping around. I loved all of the historical information that came in, at least in my version. This is a, uh, um, a review copy that was sent to me. So it's got the Kickstarter deal on it, but I didn't get all the little flags and the extra dice or anything. Life in Stalingrad, but I loved all the history that came with it. Like I said, just print out a little card that would have made it a little easier, especially as you're learning. It's nice to have it all in one place. So if you like solitaire games, I lean towards solitaire games, so it was a very nice fit for me. It does play um, where a human can take over the Russians, and that's great. So I think you can do that. It'd be interesting to see. I, I didn't play that mode, so but that's there. The co-op deal where you can both be on the same side playing against the Russians, eh, I don't think I'll ever do that. I would rather play against a human if I had the option, but it's there if you want. Um, the the uh, other factor, uh, shoot, I had another factor. What is it? Hold on. Sorry, got all dialed in on the solitaire and I forgot my other point. Well, the point is the quickness of it. Um, I, I think I've always leaned toward lighter war games. I love war games, but I don't want a deep, heavy slog with rule point after rule point after rule point after rule point. The asymmetric here, um, you know, you can do five things as the Germans and really as you get closer to your objectives and you're not in the open territory, you really kind of shrink down to just you're working on do I get reinforcements, do I do a hasty attack, a deliberate attack, or some kind of short move. But that's fine. Um, and then the real simple deal is I'm done. I've done one thing. I've done one of those things. Now the, now the Russians go. Um, it, it, it's a little weird at first looking around for your top hexes, your top stack hexes. It even sounds weird. But once you know that you're just saying, okay, I've got a stack of four there, it's maxed. Do I have any other stacks? Oh yeah, one more stack of four there in another spawn location. Well, I have two. How many spawn areas do they control? Four. That's less than. So there's going to be a movement. You do your movements for those top stacks, resolve those, it's the German turn again. Do something, boom, you're back to the Russians. Oh, oh you know what? Um, I actually have more spawn locations than I have top stacks. So we're going to spawn more. Put them in. Easy peasy. All right. Um, uh, so it's quick. It the, Not only is the entire game pretty quick, hour and a half-ish, the turns are pop, 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 pop. I mean, you're really rolling through. Uh, early on, I'd get a card, and I'd have to go, what does this card do again? What is the flotilla? But you saw the cards are actually, there's not that many different ones, but they, they have all that flavor. And then the new leader or something, I'd be like, what does this leader do? But everything pops and moves quickly, and I got immersed very, very quickly and easily. Enough said. Um, again, I would just say, so if you like a lighter, to me it's a lighter style war game. And it's more about giving you the feeling and slog and, and pain of Stalingrad rather than the simulation of it. And then do you like solitaire? I think it shines in the solitaire mode. I left it set up on the table. I could pop home from work. I'm a little tired. Go do a couple moves. Uh, hey, I'm trying to do this. See how that feels. I'm using that card. Boom, I got to go do something with the kids or the wife. Boom, come back to it later. I love that. That's where I sit. So Solid, solid entry for me. Uh, uh, the bags that come with it. You saw in my review, by the way, I, I got two infantry bags instead of the infantry bag and the uh, the armor bag. I don't care. The bags are neat, but I didn't like using them. I didn't want I have big hands, but there's an area on the board for them, and I like them just sitting up there on the board. And you're pulling them in. They're right there. You can see how many of them you've used and kind of where. And so I just liked using the board anyway. The bags weren't a big issue. It's a nice little bling thing if you want it. That's it. See you guys.